Welcome to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, dedicated to exploring the interesting journeys of the people in the provincial construction industry. Presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, produced by Gale Force Winds. Join us as we chat with the inspirational individuals that ensure the continued growth of the construction industry and the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, welcome to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast. I can tell you, it's pretty exciting. There are a lot of people on the podcast over the last three days. We've had government, industry, academia, everybody working collectively together for the greater good of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm Alan Dale. With me, as always, my good buddy, Jerry Carew. Minister, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Elvis Loveless, and I'm... Uh, I'm a boy from Fortune Bay in Newfoundland and Labrador, so a rural, rural community of Seacole, Fortune Bay, and uh, uh, represent a district of Fortune Bay, Cape Lahoon, and uh, elected since 2019, May of 2019, but certainly been around the political circles for a long time. Since 1996, I, um, I worked in the office of the Premier of Brian Tobin, uh, Roger Grimes, uh, Premier Dwight Ball, I also was executive assistant to uh, Oliver Langdon, who was Minister of Municipal Affairs at one point, and also Minister of Environment and Labor. And uh, so with that has brought a lot of experience. And I got elected in 2019 uh, under the leadership of Dwight Ball and uh, went to the back benches and uh, I certainly enjoyed my time there. And then, you know, the change of leadership happened. And then uh, Premier Henry Fury came on the scene and appointed me Minister of Fisheries and Forestry and Agriculture, which was a uh, uh, coming from a fishing district, it was an honor and a privilege. And um, there for a short period of time, and a general election came, and then the Premier appointed me Transportation and Infrastructure and responsible for the Public Procurement Act. So here I am. And uh, to say that an infrastructure portfolio uh, is important to this province, beyond important. And uh, in terms of infrastructure and what we what we're doing, uh, you know, investments, uh, we, we we see what these people that are here tonight and and the and the, the volume of people that are here tonight it is very very encouraging to see it because um, that shows there's there's positivity, there's encouragement, and there's there's lots of hope uh, in this province and this province is part of Canada. So. Um, the infrastructure piece, I believe, is becoming more magnified than ever before in Canada's history and in the world's history, and certainly in this province. And I speak a little bit about uh, Fiona and what that has caused us to do as a province, not just as a province, but each municipalities as well, because they're faced with challenges, and all of that falls under really the Newfoundland Labrador Construction Association and because they build the buildings, they maintain the buildings, and we also have road uh, infrastructure as well, which is, we know it's very important because the roads is your, is, they're your veins in and out. Right. And uh, like we've had a good re a working relationship with NLCA. That will continue. I've known Rhonda and her group, even when I was building the houses myself and uh, was a real estate agent. I know her, know her, uh, her group. I've met with her several times, uh, you know, through the Zoom process. Uh, but certainly privileged to be able to get back face to face. So um, well, we can't, I can't stress enough in terms of how relationship building, partnership equals good results. Always said it, no matter what I'm doing with politics or even a family unit, you, you have a good relationship, then you can get things done. So I'm very pleased to be here tonight to uh, represent the province of Newfoundland and Labrador as Minister Responsible for Infrastructure. So, Thank you. Um uh, let's tap into the relationship thing for a bit. Relationships are being built here. Uh, big relationships forming around big, big projects. There is an exciting uh, vibe in the room. You can feel it in the conversation here tonight. But for the last three days, very excited about what's over the horizon. Right. Uh, Newfoundland is poised to be a first mover in areas that we've never seen, the globe has never seen before. Right. Creating the types of turbines and infrastructure to support industries on a scale the world has never seen. As a Minister of Government, 
that has got to be tremendously exciting. It is beyond exciting. And uh, I just spent a week in my district because when the House of Assembly is in session, we go for three weeks, then we go to a week for our districts. Yeah. In Fortune Bay right now, it's probably the, I call it the defining moment because a lot of things are happening. Uh, I can't, I can't really say any more than really from the tops of the trees that we now have potential around uh, gold discovery, other commodities in the district. We have now, we know the demand for uh, Unit 8 in, in hydro development in Baden Spear. Uh, we have the agriculture industry that is booming down there. So, and I just met with the joint mayor's committee down there that represents all the mayors and there's a sense of excitement, excitement. There's a sense of there's concern around around healthcare, sure, absolutely. But uh, you know, we we got to build hospitals, we got to build schools, but we got to also we got to resource them. Uh, but to go back to your piece of excitement, lots of excitement out there. And you know, I'm I'm going to speak here tonight and uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I believe there will be smiles on people's faces as well. Uh, that there's there's good news coming. And there's good good things that are going to be happening uh, with Premier Fuhrer and his government, and uh, and I believe uh, over the next 12 months we'll probably see uh, bold ideas as well. So, Elvis, when you get up in the morning, you must fly out of bed, do you? Just listening <laughs> to you talk, it's like I can only imagine what it's like in your household. I can't wait to get going. Yeah. Well, it's uh, uh, I, I go back to my mom and dad. Now I'm the youngest of nine children. I was born on a boat. CBC did a Literally story. born on a boat. Literally born on a boat. And uh, my mom told the story uh, back in 2019. CBC was in awe of the story. Because when my mom said that I born the baby with my rubber boots on, and that was literally the situation. And the, the captain of the boat was, is, was Michael Kane. My middle name is Michael. Because he was so concerned about me that mom said, he deserves recognition. I'm going to give, middle name will be Michael. Uh, but now she named me Elvis, the first name, so I'm like, he probably ran out of names. No, she said it was going to be a boy, it's going to be Elvis. So uh, I, I am excited. I, I'm excited as an individual uh, at home. We have lots of fun. Yes, we do. And uh, but I'm ex I'm excited about those problems. I think we're I think really it's uh, it's probably one of the best moments. This province is is, and I call it challenge uh, with right now and. Uh, because there are challenges, and we know that around healthcare, but that's a world problem. It's a Canadian problem. Yeah. But uh, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there, and uh, you know. So I'm I'm beyond proud, and uh, and a good reason to have a good smile on my face. Now, Minister, I often ask this question uh, to guests that come on the show. It seems that in Newfoundland, whether it's the traditional uh, sectors and industries, whether it's the new emerging ones, good things are happening. Right. They always seem to happen. Newfoundlanders always seem to make it work in a way that nobody else can. Harsh conditions, living out here on the edge of the ocean, right. but yet we make it work. What is the secret sauce here? What is this recipe for success? It's a sense of togetherness. It's a sense of community spirit. I, I come from a small community that was... Um, and I give you an example, it sums up, it's very simplistic. I drove out of my community, my hometown this week as I was out there visiting. And my hometown is my district. They're building a shed, a massive shed for a fisherman there. There's about 13 guys there that's helping to build was shed. Was it destroyed in Fiona or? No, no, no it was just, just a new shed that he want to store okay, his yeah. lobster gear and stuff. But everybody's there. So there's no labor cost, <laughs> everybody's there. So that really sums it up in terms of Newfoundland and Labrador. Yeah, right. It's we, we, we always have each other's backs. And I go back to the Fiona uh, dis disaster, I guess, but, and we're building on that. But I, I visited uh, Port of Bass with the Premier of the province, and um, they got assurances from the Premier that, especially when people were saying, I've lost everything, insurance will not cover me. Premier said, you will be reassured. We will stand with you shoulder to shoulder. It gave me goosebumps when I heard him say it because that's what we're all about. Because people that have lost everything, if insurance companies you're not willing to help, move aside because we are. We have a responsibility as a government and I believe that shows the, the commitment that we have to one another. And, uh, you know, opportunities arise from this as well. Uh, you know, the, the, the storm, the Fiona, 
they say a hail, a hail wind blows something good. There's something good coming out of Fiona. We're learning from uh, uh, you know a, a climate perspective what we need to do with our infrastructure because we built alongside the ocean because of the fishery because we wanted to leave our houses and jump aboard boats and go fishing. Uh, but now it's a, it's a different world in terms of what the infrastructure being built close to the ocean presents for us. So it's uh, you know it, that's a challenge because we have so many communities coastline. But I, I will be attending the federal uh, territorial meetings of ministers of infrastructure very soon. That will be a topic of discussion, no doubt. And uh, I will I will leave a case with the federal minister and other ministers what we need here as a province in terms of infrastructure moving forward. So that's great for here because I need a commitment from the from all levels of government that we all need to work together so we can allow people be here to be proud and all of us to be proud. So, and again, it goes back to the theme of partnership. You have the right partnerships, you'll get the right results. Minister, thank you very much for the conversation here My tonight. Pleasure. Thank you very much for your service to the province of Newfoundland thank you. and Labrador and your leadership in your, uh, in your department now. Very important to this province as we move forward together and uh, achieve wonderful things. Thanks for uh, joining us here. You're on the Newfoundland and Labrador building, building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast. There you go, and doing it right. Doing it right. Good. Thank you for tuning in to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, produced by Gale Force Winds.